Yeah, I'm waiting until a five and then we start. So yeah, well, perfect then. Um, so welcome everyone uh, to uh, the third talk today about uh, making reproducible figures. Uh, so you had the talk earlier from uh, Jerome and, and Jan uh, on their uh, on their tools. And um, for this third talk, I want to show you another tool that is called uh, Homero figure. Uh, so I can share my screen and what is why can I not well okay so um, on this third uh, workshop, which is on uh, making reproducible figures. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Omero figure, uh, which is a plugin uh, uh, part of uh, the Omero environment, which is a, a data management platform. Um, and so before we start, I want to uh, acknowledge the different people. Uh, so I would, of course, thanks uh, the I2K organizers. But also Jan Borscher who suggested me to do this workshop. So after the two other workshop uh, they conducted, so you can uh, see the different tools that exist and um, choose choose the one that suits you best. Um, I would also like to thanks uh, Peter Valchisco uh, from the OME team who is providing uh, us today with a training server. So uh, I will have credentials to share with you, uh, so you can test Omero Figure on the training server of the OME team. Um, and a little bit about me. So I'm a, a server administrator, uh, a Nomero server administrator at, a, at the University of Dusseldorf in Germany. And I work uh, in a microscopy platform, uh, the Kai. So where I train users to use um, the data management platform Omero, advise them how to uh, do data management. And part of this is also how to use Omero figure. Um, I also want to mention that I am not part of the OME team, so I'm not talking on their behalf here. It's uh, Omero is the, the tool developed by the OME team. Um, and the tool we're talking about today is called Omero Figure, and this is a plugin for Omero Web. So that's a lot of uh, Omero names, um, but Omero Web uh, is an interface, a web browser interface for uh, to access data that is stored inside an Omero server. Um, and so Omero figure uh, is created by Will Moore and um, uh, maybe we can start with the cons of what is what are the cons of Omero figure. So the first issue with that uh, would be that you need to have the access to an Omero server. So Omero is not widespread in all universities yet. Uh, so I would say, well, um, this is not going to be accessible after for everyone if you don't have access to an Omero server. And maybe the second part, if I could also situate uh, Omero figure uh, with the other tool that you had presented before, it's also not uh, much designed to work with plots. So Omero is generally just a data management platform for microscopy data. And so um, it is not designed then to be working with plots like uh, the tool of uh, Jerome. Um, and talking about the pros, uh, I think Omero figures uh, speaks for itself. I will show you in a few minutes. Um, but uh, in my opinion, well, data management is very important and you would have to sell it to the people. Um, but usually when I come during my introduction to the tool Omero figure, that's where the, that's when the people are really interested in uh, starting with data management. So I, I hope uh, you will also have this feeling when using Omero figure that um, it's very convenient um, to be working directly on the on the data that is on the mail. Um, and so, to talk maybe a little bit about data management uh, before we uh, dive into uh, Omero, um, that the scientific images we are working with are more than just pixels. So it's not just uh, the the data we are collecting with a camera. But this is data that we have to organize. So when we are collecting a data set of data, the images are belonging together. And this is what you can represent on Omero by grouping your data inside data set. But you can also then 
add layers of organization by tagging your data sets or even tagging your images if there's some uh, information, uh, uh, some specific information about an image within the data set. Uh, but also you have the metadata that's coming with. Um, there's of course the microscope metadata that is the, the details of how was the image acquired. But you could also add information, uh, the kind of information you would have in your electronic lab notebook, for example, recording um, uh, which biological entity you were working with or how you prepared your sample. Uh, what protocol were used or what concentration of some reagent, et cetera. And so this are also information you can attach to the images. Um, we are also talking about region of interest. So doing analysis of images, you often end up with uh, the region of interest that you would also like to have uh, kept close to your uh, images. Uh, but that could also be uh, tables of results that can also be uh, linked back to images or region of interest. And so in short, that, that would maybe describe Omero that it's uh, a database that keeps track and link all these kinds of data together on the image so that you don't just work with pixel, but you can work with all the metadata that's coming with uh, those images. All right, and then um, here is uh, what Omero would look like. Um, so we are on Omero web. So this is the web interface to, um, uh, to work with the data uh, situated on Omero. On the left, you would have uh, the collection of data that you have imported there already. So in green, you have uh, some data sets. Um, and when you select the data set, you would have the preview of your image in the center with some details on the right, which are uh, here are the data set details because I'm selecting the data set. But if I select an image, then I would have the description of that image, um, uh, the dimension, pixel types, pixel size, which is uh, also attached in the metadata of the image, uh, the shape, so in terms of Z section time points. Also the name of the channel. So this is where you could uh, also edit the channel names to add the, to, to name your channels accordingly. Um, and all the rest would be annotations like the, tag as, the tags I was mentioning earlier or key value pairs to add information, uh, dictionary-like information to your images or your data sets. Um, and well, double clicking an image, you could preview your image and uh, browse through your images. Uh, so that's what Omero Web uh, uh, can do. So to help you browse your data, view your data, um, rearrange um, the, the contrast so you can explore your data. Um, also, if you have ROIs attached, this is where you could explore your, your results uh, of your image analysis, for example. Um, but of course, well, we are not here to, to show um, this part, but rather how to create figures. And so before I give you the access to the server, I wanna give you the quick um, quick figure creation uh, making example um, to show you what, what we're gonna try to do today together. Uh, so I'm gonna select this data set. Uh, I'm gonna, or another data set I had in mind. Uh, that would be this one. Let's select this image. Uh, we can take, I think this image and um, let's go for this free. And so selecting these three images, well, I have all the details about all this image, but I'm gonna right click and go to open with Omero figure. And this is gonna open the plugin uh, of Omero web for um, making figures and open those image and display them inside a canvas. So I'm gonna do this quickly, selecting the images together, reshaping them to fit them inside my canvas. I have a tool to align them to a grid. My images, well, I'm gonna show this channel instead. I'm gonna control C, control V to duplicate them. Um, have them all fitting this A4 page roughly. Um, 
maybe I will uh, turn off, change every channel uh, to white. Uh, I should also disable these two channels for that one, these two channels for that one, this channel and this channel. Okay. And there I would have um, all the images I want to present. Um, here in this panel, this is where I can choose the preview. So adjust the contrast like I just did. You could also adjust uh, the zoom or the Z slice or the time point uh, going through your image. Um, I'm going to go uh, just going with that. Here in the labels, you can add things to your images. So I'm going to show uh, the scale bar. So reading uh, the pixel size value, it also automatically uh, put the scale bar to the right size. Since we are working uh, with images linked to their metadata, we can also add uh, labels. So originating from this metadata. So for the top images, I will add the channel names as separate labels so on the top of the images. And I would directly automatically read the names of the channel to display them here on top. On the left side, I could, for example, uh, show some metadata that was attached to these images. So in the key value pairs, then I could uh, select the cell cycle phase of these images. Um, what happened? Uh, I will place them on the left, on the vertical side. Let's do it again. Meta phase. So these two images had the metadata. Well, Unfortunately, this image doesn't have the metadata. Um, so maybe I could replace that image by a different image that has the metadata. So let's go find that image. So with this ID, that could then select all this image. And since this image is coming from this ID, I could go on edit the ID to preview and update the image with a different image. Okay, now we have our free image, I can add the missing label of that one. Okay, and we have the free image of prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase uh, right there. Um, I could also adjust the contrast if I need to. Uh, I'm going to be fine with that for now. Uh, and what I can do is to adjust my canvas size to my figure so I can go to file, paper, setup crop page around panel that will automatically fit my canvas to my images. And this I can export to PDF. And now my figure is ready for download and I have the PDF file. So this PDF file, you could also open uh, with your PDF editor to edit the labels further, add more text, change the colors, add text or change the fonts, uh, but you would have your PDF ready. That could also be exported as a TIFF to include in your PowerPoint presentation. But I think where it's very interesting is that you could also save your figure. So that would save your figure uh, I2K workshop. You could save your figure creation. And so this would then become a link that you could share with your collaborators that have access to your Omero account. And let's say I would uh, leave my figure for six months and come back um, later. I don't, I showed my figure in presentation, but I could not recall what were the images I was using as the source. Now I can come back to a mirror figure, open the file, find the I2K workshop file, and there would be my images. And if I select my image, going back to info, I could find back the links to the web client. And so giving me, uh, showing me where the image come from and what is exactly the source of my images. So that would be um, my very quick tour of Omero figure, but uh, I don't think you could all follow <laughs> everything I did and remember. Um, so now I want to come to the second part of the workshop and give you uh, access to this server. So you could also access uh, some data and try it on your own. So I'm going to open the chat. And uh, let's see. So there 
you have, I put in the chat a link to a spreadsheet. So this is a spreadsheet with uh, 50 credentials. So I don't know how many of you, this is 24. So there's credential for everyone. Um, so uh, when you go to this uh, page, please uh, ins insert your name or anything next to the account you want to use just so that you don't, uh, so that two person don't use the same account. Um, and yes, please uh, be respectful of others. Uh, do not delete data from the server that's, uh, that will be used for next workshops. Um, but yeah, feel free then to take an account and, and trade for yourself. And I see that there's a question from Ved. Uh, you mentioned about cons not designed to work with plot. What was that? So um, you could, in theory, put a PNG of uh, the plot you created uh, with Python or with R um, and insert it inside your figure. Uh, but it's not that you could directly modify your plot on the fly within Omero figure. So you would have, every time you want to make a modification to your plot, you would have to regenerate it, import it into Omero and add it to your figure. Um, so I think in that, uh, what I meant by that is if you take um, the creation of the figure from uh, the code itself, then the tool of uh, Jerome would be much more adapted where you can um, in the um, in the figure creation itself, place code that would generate the plots and not just work with the, the PNG. Okay. Um, so I can see a few of you have taken uh, the account. Uh, have you also found the server address? So I also put it in uh, the, the uh, spreadsheet. Uh, and I will also put the link so you can log in. And uh, we have a second question. What are the 3D viewing capabilities in Omero? Um, so Omero uh, overall is, well, is not uh, displaying images in 3D. There's a plugin that, that can work for that, uh, I think. Uh, I don't know them so much, but I, I would say, yeah, it's rather limited that you can browse through a 3D stack, um, uh, also time series. If you have uh, the pyramidal format resolution, it's possible to, to browse the, the images in Omero. Um, but for viewing um, an image in 3D, uh, this, this is less uh, designed for that. And I would prefer other tools like Napari to do so and well, I think it's out of the scope of this workshop, but you could, in a way, uh, import images from a file server of uh, Inomero and access those same image from Napari. So I would try to find the best of both worlds and working with um, more adapted tools for 3D viewing. Okay. Um, so if you are uh, logged in to Omero, uh, if not, please uh, drop a question in the chat. Um, but you could choose also a data set from the list you have available. Um, so you maybe not have exactly the same list of data set than I do, but I think you also have the condens condensation data set. So you could select that one, for example, uh, select uh, an image of your choice. Uh, or even several or from several data sets if you want to open images from uh, several data sets. And then you can go on right click and open with Omero figure. And that will open the Omero figure plugin. There's different ways to open the image. You also have a shortcut on the top right for Omero figure, or you could as well open a blank figure from the top link and this will ask you if you want to create a new file or open a file and if you select create new file this is where you could have um, you could put a link to the image id uh, and so the link to image ids you would have here on the top right you can take 
a link to the images you want, copy the whole link, paste it in there, add images, and I will open the images. Uh, so for Sophie, uh, you have to open uh, the spreadsheet here, and the password uh, is written next to the, the user credentials. So you would have both the username and the password there. So now that you, if you have uh, images open in Omero figure, so this is where you can resize them. Uh, if you want to rearrange them, copy, um, let's do copy and paste those images. And so what I'm doing is a shortcut. So I select the images and then control C, control V. I have my images, I can select them all. And on the top uh, right, you will have this align to grid button where you can rearrange your images so you don't have to play too long realigning the different panels. Um, and then I invite you to go play inside the preview um, where uh, you can adjust contrasts um, or change the time point of the image. So let's say for the first image, I will take the first time point, the second time point, I will take somewhere in the middle and the third one, something at the end. I could actually do that for both images at the same time, selecting uh, the same time points for all images. Um, I could also uh, play with the zoom if I am only interested in showing a certain part of the image. Um, and to continue, once I have my images in the layout I want them to be, I can go to uh, labels in this uh, floating floating window and add a scale bar so that you could go and just click to add the scale bar. If you want to adjust the size, you can adjust the size right there. Um, we could also add a region of interest if we have regions of interest attached to our image. So we could add that one, for example, that one, that one, and that one. Maybe you want to show the results of uh, your segmentation. So the question of Jan, for contrast adjustment, can one somehow check that the image does not become oversaturated and can multiple images be adjusted at the same time with the same contrast settings? So you can uh, adjust uh, the range of the pixels uh, together um, for all uh, images. You could select all your images at the same time and uh, change uh, the, the range of the pixel but uh, this is not doing uh, checking of oversaturation or um, it's not an automatic, there's no automatic contrast adjustment there. It's, um, so if you would want to do that, either you would need to add this functionality to Omero figure, or you would, I think, need to open the image inside Fiji to then find out what are the, the pixel range. Uh, um, and for that, there's plugin inside Fiji where you can uh, connect to a Numero server to directly open the, the images you want. So in a way you could work um, with all the Fiji tool by opening an image inside Fiji, but this functionality does not exist uh, inside Omero figure. Um, okay, so we were at the labels, we added uh, some label here. Um, if you want to add more labels to your images, uh, you can go here 
and you will have a job done list of different uh, label you can attach that are coming from the metadata. Uh, so if I select this first image, I could show uh, the name of the image uh, or the data set it's coming from, uh, or like I did earlier, the channels as separate labels uh, in the color and with the name of the channels that are active for the current panel. We have also tags or key value pairs, and maybe that one is interesting for us uh, since we are playing with the time of the images. We could, uh, so what is the range uh, of the time? It's in minutes, hours. So I think if we select this time format, so time dot hours, uh, minutes, we could position, for example, in the top left corner of our image, let's make it white. And I'm going to do that for all images at the same time and add it. And this will go read uh, for every panel what is the current select, currently selected uh, uh, frame and display the, the time accordingly. And if I'm changing um, uh, the, the time point, the time is changing as well. So every time I'm changing the uh, the frame, uh, Omero figure goes uh, apply the right the right label for that. Um, and we would have the same thing for X or Y or Z um, or Z axis if you want to show what's the depth of uh, of your plane. Um, uh, and if you want to really go uh, deeper in uh, how to format labels. There's also tips there. So you could also add uh, unit precisions to your labels. You could also uh, add an offset uh, to the timestamps or, uh, so what I mean by that, we could say, so this is uh, the image, the frame number 13. So if I offset all these images, with the image number 13, then all the time will be relative to the image in the center because this is frame number 13. This would be one hour uh, before and this would be 40 minutes after. So if you have a very quick time series with an event and you wanna show a few milliseconds before, a few milliseconds after, um, that would be uh, one way of doing it here. Um, is there any question on this part so far? While you're thinking about your question, I can um, continue. Um, another thing I could be doing, so maybe I'm gonna move down there. Um, so let's say this image, we duplicate it align it to show individual channels and we adjust the contrast together. So they're all the same in the free, in the free images here. Well, maybe there's no need. Um, let's say I wanna do a zoom in view. So I could select this image and in the preview, go to zoom. And let's say this is a cell that's very interesting for us. So I'm gonna, uh, center my cell in this panel. And if you uh, look to the view coordinates here, you will see that they are updated as I move the image, as I pan inside the image. Um, also, if I zoom in and out, you will see the width and the height change. Um, and so these are the coordinates of the region of interest. And this is something I can copy and I could paste to the next images. So they will show exactly the same uh, region of interest. So if I uh, change something a little bit here, I can always copy and paste to the next. Um, but if I do that for the source image where there's the whole view of the, of the picture, I can instead go to labels and paste it as a region of interest. And now this is gonna show me here as a region of interest, exactly the region um, that I zoomed in here. Um, 
and we could of course think about having um, more than one zoom in so maybe we can zoom also inside this cell copy this region of interest paste it here and paste it as a region of interest here and that would be how to make uh, insets with a mirror figure. Um, so if you're working with your mirror figure, uh, you could then save your, your figure and maybe share a link if you want to show what what you've what you are doing uh, can you export the figure as svg to be open in inkscape potentially so um you can export it as pdf or as tiff uh, i think with pdf it's a sort of svg format i don't, I don't want to say something wrong either but um then you can edit the pdf in inkscape Yes. Um, so then that, that would open uh, yeah, the addition to all the tools that are available in Inkscape. So Omero, Omero figure itself doesn't have all the functionalities of Inkscape. It's nothing, uh, nothing close to all the functionalities there. It's rather limited to um, uh, the main functions um, uh, biologists need to display uh, figures to make montage of their images. Um, but yes, then if we export it as PDF, uh, you can further edit it. Will it maintain the layers in Inkscape, e.g. scale bar? Uh, so the scale bar is also, should also then be uh, something you can edit uh, if you export as a PDF. So maybe we can try uh, export as PDF. No, I forgot. I should first paper setup. Let me do again, file, paper setup, size, crop page around panels to have just the view I need and export it again. And download the figure. So now I can open that with Adobe Acrobat. And can I, Oops, yes, still that one. How do I go and edit? Uh, well, I'm not a pro with PDFs. Uh, edit, edit text and images. And here you could add the text, if it's not exactly what you wanted, uh, rush shape, change the font, uh, move your labels. You can also uh, change the scale bars. Oops, this is not the scale bar I'm selecting now. Change the scale bar. Well, don't change the scale, of, the size of your scale bar, of course, but you could change the colors, uh, etc. Um. Okay, and maybe one uh, one very nice uh, thing with Omero, I think, is that you can work with uh, large data sets uh, remotely. Um, so you cannot do 3D viewing, uh, but let's take, for example, these data sets that are from the IDR, where we have images that are, what, 122,000 pixel wide by 100,000 pixel high. And this is something I can open uh, with Omero. Let's open a few of them. So let's take a knee, a heart, an eye, and a brain. Let's try Omero figure. And because Omero also computes sub-resolution for these uh, images, this is something I can still open all at once because here it will only display me a sub-resolution of that image. And maybe to demonstrate a bit. 
further what I mean by that. If I open the viewer here, you see the image is loading very fast. And that's because it's not showing me the full resolution, but rather a sub resolution. My screen is not even 2000 pixel wide. So it's probably loading a resolution of 1000 pixel uh, max. But when I start zooming in, then Omero will send me higher resolution. And the more I zoom in, the higher resolution I get only for the subregion sub -region I'm looking at. And so here I can browse through this image and uh, look at the, the resolution I need, just like in QPass, if you, if you use QPass. Um, and so that's what, what happens here. So we can also go on and zoom inside the image that we will load um, the right resolution for us. Okay, maybe I'm lost in the image. Let's go here and we would maybe have this region there that we would like to show as an example for what we are doing. And this I could as well then show as an inset here. Oops, I meant here. Oh, well, that's a bit too zoomed out. So we wouldn't see much here. So let's zoom out, copy, uh, delete and paste. Well, still too small. When you export PDF TIFF, you have embedded the dawn scale image of such a high resolution image. Exactly. So uh, at the moment it generates uh, the image, it computes the right resolution it should, it should display. So it's stiff with 300 uh, DPI. So that's normally the resolution that's uh, required for publication. Um, but then the SVG file you have inside, if you zoom in, you will have the sub-resolution in your pixels. Um, so you should adapt your images to the canvas uh, size you want. So here by default, it's an A4 page. If you need to have a bigger resolution uh, for bigger printing, then you could change the canvas size to something bigger, uh, just so that uh, when you export the image, it's at 300 DPI uh, for the right size you need. Um, okay. And so, you would be then able to work with uh, very big data sets. So even if it's large Z stacks and time series, so talking maybe about light sheet data sets, um, then that would not be a problem to do it uh, on your web browser uh, from uh, your couch, uh, drinking a glass of wine. And if you do that, uh, I think uh, Josh Moore would be really happy to, to know about it. Um, So has anyone made a figure and saved it that he could share to us as a link? So for example, well, maybe that's not my best figure here. Let's go and edit this a little more. So for example, we could Do something like that. Okay. Reset, copy, paste. Well, let's say I'm going to save that. Large images, I2K. And now I have this file. And so if I share that with you, in theory, you should be able to open uh, that image, that figure creation uh, of your own. Um, clicking on my link, this would be the image. Okay. So if you want to share your own figure to show me what uh, what you're doing right now, um, I would I would really love to see what you what you're doing.
Um, what else? Do you know if insets and zooms, etc., are interpolated? Interpolated, and if yes, how? Um, so there is no interpolation uh, with Omero figure, so it shows um, it shows the pixel as they as they are. If you zoom in enough in that image, you should be able uh, to see the pixels. And so it always show uh, pixels, but if you show a large region, uh, then you would have so many pixels that it shows a sub-resolution and well, it's not interpolated, it's averaged. Um, but you, yes, you don't have interpolation in the, in the images. Uh, maybe I can reset that. Or even control Z back to where we were. Um, in the region of interest, there's other things we can add. So you also have uh, the arrow type. If you want to show a detail in your image, uh, you could create your own arrow eyes as circles or place, oops, place bars, if that makes sense for you to add bars. Um, unfortunately, I think that's a feature that a lot of people are requesting to have possibility to put text inside the images. So this is not fortunately possible right now. So this is something you would have to do um, after exporting the PDF and adding text. Um, otherwise, uh, you would have uh, the labels that you can put uh, in the corner of the image or on the top, uh, around the image on the top, uh, on the top, on the left, or vertical. Let's go for the full bottom and also up left corner, etc. So as I showed earlier, there's also these functionalities of replacing an image by another. Um, so if we go uh, maybe in the advanced details of Omero figure, um, what we are working, what we are changing when we are working with this is only uh, JSON. So if I go to file, export as JSON, you would have here uh, the description of your figure. So this describe uh, what are the image IDs that you should um, open, uh, the name of the image, the width, etc., and so where they should be placed in the image, um, what should be the labels, what should be the ROIs like. And so your, your figure is actually just a JSON uh, description of how to display the images. And so this is what happened uh, when you share the figure with someone, the file I've placed in the chat. If you click, Omero goes read the JSON file description of that image and then loads uh, the images uh, from the server. So it doesn't, Omero figure is not saving um, uh, the figure every time uh, as uh, pixels, but rather just save the textual description. Um, and so this is why it becomes then possible if you select images to just go edit the ID of the image. So you replace in the textual description um, the ID of the current image by a different image ID. And that's if you have a figure as a template, for example, you could then reuse this template and replace it um, 
by different images of your choice. So copying again the ID, finding the right figure here. We do a preview. It will tell us if the dimensions are matching. If not, the display will be a bit different. Z section, time point, if you were showing some time points, if the channels are the name or not, but we can then update and show the next image. And we have a question. How will you add a PNG uh, to a Numero figure? Um, well, anything that you can import inside Omero, you could then have inside a Numero figure. Um, so behind Omero, you have uh, bioformats, so this, which is also developed by the OME team. Um, and uh, so, as you know, bioformats can open a lot of different image type. Uh, and so all these image types would then be supported inside Omero. So you can import those images, add them to your image library. And this is then something that you could add uh, to an Omero figure. So if you make a plot and save it as a PNG, you could still upload it to Omero to add it to your, um, to your figure there. Um, But again, maybe it would be, I think, best to just generate um, the, the part of your figure for the images and maybe export it as a PDF and move to a tool like Inkscape and then the plugins, uh, different plugins like uh, the tool of, of Jerome to generate the plot. I think, I think that I, I would really love to see this kind of, of workflow where you generate an image inside of Mero and then add, uh, add other plots with other tools. So we still don't have anyone wanting to share an image, uh, a figure, um, or what data sets have you used? What else? Uh, well, we can play also with the rotation. Well, I should not work with those, they're quite big. Uh, we could also play with the rotation of the image. Well, this is not uh, very common. And of course, if you rotate your image into the square canvas, uh, you will have some weird effects on the edges. Um, another thing we could do, uh, if I could find, yes, with Z sections, all those, yes, let's try to open this one, open with Omero figure. So we now have a stack. This image is a stack, so I could also scroll through the stack of that image. I could also do a maximum intensity projection here. Um, so let's see if it loads. Because now we are loading the full stack uh, between this range. So that's more data that has to be read from the server. So that's gonna be a bit slower, but I could at the same time add the Z position that's being uh, displayed. So the slice three to 16, we could maybe then show uh, 14, 26, oops. Let's keep playing a bit with, no, let's, let's copy Z and 25, 39. And we would show a free range. Let's align them to a grid. And as I mentioned before, uh, there's different tips of what we can display. So here we are displaying in pixels. So for the Z, the Z stack, that would mean displaying it in uh, uh, what is the index of the slice. 
but we could instead show it in terms of unit. So if I go change my label right here to the unit, we would then have the range in micrometer. So this is from one micrometer to seven. Maybe let's go for the beginning like that. And we would show this free slice of our stack. Um, and again, if we want, we could be displaying details just for that cell, copy, paste, and paste as region of interest here. Uh, removing label. I could also add, let's do that, channels in the inside of the image. Well, for this image, the channel names haven't been set, so we only have the zero, one, two. Um, we could change that manually if we know the name of our channels. Uh, maybe the blue one is Dappy. Um, and well, other things we could do. So there's also some formatting we could have inside the labels to put uh, text in bold or in italic. I don't know if that's useful for any of you, but let's say I want the unit Oops. to be in bold characters. So I could surround these two by, now uh, maybe I can zoom in, surround the text I want in bold by two stars and I will make the text bold. Uh, okay. Do you have any other question? Um, if not, uh, we could end the session here. Um, ah, we have another question. How can we add scale bars and can we show individual channels below this merged image? Ah, uh, so if the question is on the choice of display, I don't know if I have a very good answer to give you, um, but yes, for this image, you're right, we can select them all and I could add the scale bar directly. Uh, if you want to show individual channels, so here I'm showing a zoomed in view at three different slice. Um, so how could I do that? Um, I guess that would be, well, I could always copy paste the whole thing, right? And show individual channels. Um, something like that. This is maybe not the most appropriate display. Um, I would have to think how to make this, uh, <laughs> this layout a bit more appealing, um, but you can always copy paste your, uh, your canvas and um, uh, change what you want to be displaying. Uh, and we have a link to, how do you add the boxed Zoom. Okay, um, so for that, uh, I'm gonna do it on my figure and I'm gonna check if you can do the same. Once you did the zoom in here, what you can do is copy the view with this button right here. So copy crop region. And if you select then the image with the bigger resolution, if you go to label and in the ROI, so I'm gonna delete the one that was here before, you can paste what you copied right before here. Um, so yes, in your case, I'm not gonna modify your file, but I would copy this region, 
paste it here. Maybe we can paste it as uh, paste it and make it black maybe it's more visible and we could then copy this region and paste it here yeah, i really like your figure it's showing this at different scale yes that's very nice and maybe adjusting the scale would be also uh, <laughs> um, probably important here i don't know if yes something like that that we can at least see a millimeter of tissue um yes so if you don't have any more questions then i could end this session here and well thank you for joining the workshop and yes bye